So I recently did a test on the DJI Osmo Action 5 Pro in webcam mode because some people will be using this camera for a webcam or for live streaming situations, but it didn't do too well against its own Action 4 and even the Action 3. Did DJI fix these issues in webcam mode? Let's find out together because you're watching Blue Collar Guy. Okay, we're back. So today we're going to see if the DJI Osmo Action 5 Pro can redeem itself from its previous footage I uploaded in one of my other videos. I'm going to show you a little clip of what happened when that camera was in webcam mode. So let's take a look at that. And if you're new to Blue Collar Guy, we tend to do videos that other people are not talking about. So I usually go on YouTube, take a look around and see what everybody else is talking about and try to do something unique so that you're not just watching a regurgitated video of the same exact information that you already seen 15 times earlier. So let's go and take a look at that footage. This is the previous version of the update, just so you know, it's the previous version. So if you look at this video, it looks like it's very much over sharpened. And I don't really like the way it looks. It kind of looks too overdone, uh, uh, too overprocessed. And that's the Sony ZV-E10 footage because I use that as my uh, other type of web camera as well. And now we're going to take another look at what I noticed with the Action 4. So this would be the Action 4 footage and it looks a lot better than, than the other footage from the Action 5. Go well, back to the Action 5. So this is over sharpened. So this is what it looks like. It's way over sharpened. It looks like it's things are almost blown out in this webcam mode. And we're going to see what it looks like now compared to this. And I think that there's going to be a huge improvement on what this camera can do now. Okay, so now we're going to go to the DJI Osmo Action 5 Pro after the firmware update. So I'm just going to switch over to that right now. And, and this is what it looks like in webcam mode now. As you can see, it is a big improvement. So this is what it looks like now in webcam mode. I think the picture quality has gotten a lot better. It is not over sharpened like it was before. It is pretty much identical to what I believe the Action 4 will be. And we're going to put on the Action 4 and do a comparison between this one and the Action 4. So I'm going to go back to my Osmo Pocket 3, which I'm using also as a studio cam. Okay, so now we're all back on the Osmo Pocket 3. I'm going to switch over to the Action 4. There was a little bit of a delay in the audio versus video. So now we're going to go to the Action 4 and I'm going to hook that up. We're going to do a comparison. Okay, so now we're on the Osmo Action 4 in webcam mode. And as you can see, it's a little bit darker than the Osmo Action 5 Pro. So not only did they fix the over sharpening issue, but they also managed to boost it a little bit so it does better in lower light. Lower light doesn't necessarily mean in the dark. It can also mean in a darker environment. So the Osmo Action 5 Pro has been fixed pretty well in webcam mode. And the picture quality is pretty much the same as the Osmo Action 4. And there is an improvement, like I said, you could, you could take this footage and you could bring it up a bit in, in the highlights, of course. You could do fix that in post, but you don't have to in the Osmo Action 5 Pro. That is a much, much better improvement. So one of my subscribers asked me to do a comparison with the dedicated webcam, like the Obspot Meet, for instance. This webcam has a much smaller sensor, like a lot of webcams, and a lot of webcams are also using half-inch sensors. 
So I'm going to show you uh, the difference between a regular webcam as a webcam and using an action camera as a webcam. So we're going to go back to the Osmo Action 5 Pro as a webcam and I'm going to hook up this one and we're going to go back and forth and you can see the difference between that. So let's just go back to me on the Pocket 3 and we'll switch off this one and I'm going to take the Obspot now and plug it in and it plugs in through the back of course now I'm sorry that I have to use these on handheld I do have them on the like a little tripod but it's not getting the right height <laughs> on these ones so um, we're gonna just wait okay so let's go back okay so this is what the Obspot looks like in webcam mode and as you can see the colors are a lot different and it also uh, it's a it's lighter than the webcam mode on the DJI uh, Action 4 so I think in that respect the webcam a dedicated webcam looks a little bit better uh, there is still a little slight delay of course you know when you use this in with audio you can get what they are referred to as micro jitters and things like that so if you're worried about the delay situation if you use the obspot um, uvc like the dedicated uvc converter you don't get that delay especially on the osmo action cameras but you're not getting it on the pocket 3 you're only getting it when I plug it in directly through the UVC port on my OC GoStream. So I'm going to switch this one off now and we're going to go back to the um, Action 5 Pro and we're going to see if th that camera is better than a webcam that you would just go buy. We've got the Osmo Action 5 Pro. I'm just hand holding it it's got some it's using some kind of stabilization as well so not only is it better in webcam mode like it looks better than a webcam like a dedicated webcam so we're going to go back to the Osmo Pocket 3 to do a comparison so I'm just going to queue that one up and then we'll go back and forth so let me just I'm going to try to hold this as steady as I can Okay, so now we're back on the Osmo Pocket 3. And as you can see, if I go back and forth, that's the Pocket 3 down in the corner. And this, the bigger picture that you're seeing, the one that I'm moving around right now, is the Action 5 Pro. And it is using stabilization. And it doesn't look over sharpened. It looks really well. And when in comparison to the Osmo Pocket 3 it's pretty close and it's doing better than the Action 4 and it's doing better than your typical webcam so what I recommend this now as a webcam absolutely yes so now that we've done all the testing you can see that the footage on the Osmo Action 5 Pro has gotten considerably better what have we learned from this well I didn't send my Osmo Action 5 Pro back because I knew that DJI always does firmware updates when they usually release a new camera, they always find out what needs to be improved, they listen to the audience, and then they fix the issues that they can do. I think that DJI is going to beat Insta360 when the Insta360 Ace Pro 2 gets released. I do believe that they will, because DJI is not just about action cameras. They also have their Pocket 3, which I'm currently using as a studio cam. And they also have the DJI Ronin 4D, which a lot of people don't know about, which was used in the movie Civil War, which is a blockbuster cinematic movie. Sony has been put on notice with their technology. They make top-of-the-line gimbals, wireless video transmission systems that are used in professional studio work. They also just bought Hasselblad, so they can improve on their sensors or their cameras. I do believe they're just getting started with this new sensor and its capabilities that they've installed on this camera and are trying to iron out the quirks the best way 
they can. I also think that they're getting some feedback, making some adjustments to it. Some people have said, well, now that the bit rate has changed, the battery life has decreased. And that's true. But it's also true that you can't have your cake and eat it too. So what did they do right? Well, they gave people an option. They gave them a higher bit rate and a lower bit rate. So if you want a higher bit rate and better picture quality and a lower bit rate and longer battery life. They've given us a choice between 10-bit or 8-bit color, which is the difference between 16 million colors and 1 billion colors. DJI has entered the cinematic camera market. One of the reasons why I'm going to be sticking with DJI is because they're expanding and coming in fighting like a lion. At the more competitive prices, they are taking on Sony, they're taking on Canon, they're taking on other action camera companies like GoPro, which by the way is doing the worst out of all the new releases. They did well in not just the video market, but the microphone market as well. I'm using the DJI Mic 2 right now. They're creating an ecosystem that is much more user friendly and integral than Sony can put out. DJI is doing very well at these spaces, the microphone space, the action camera space, the Pocket 3 space, which is taking on mirrorless cameras. Because they bought Hasselblad, which is a premium camera company that has medium format sensors, which can make a full frame sensor look very small by comparison. This company has a very focused strategy because they're looking at cameras from all different perspectives. They also make high quality drones. I'm not a big fan of the DJI Neo drone because you can't use it as a selfie drone in the city. You could fly into a car or a person. You could end up getting sued for hurting somebody. I'm very confused why they decided to build that particular drone. Maybe because of Hover Air X1. I'm not sure. But at least you can fly it like a regular drone as well. So this is why I'm sticking with the DJI ecosystem. It's not just about action cameras for me. It's about the Pocket 3 and the Pocket 4, which will come out in the future. And I know that that's a lot of what ifs, but this is the way things tend to be going with this company. They are moving forward at a very fast rate. They have a very professional and cinematic look. I'm not going to give DJI a glowing report. There are some things that need to be fixed. And I do have some recommendations for DJI if they really want to take on this space. I think they should put shutter angle on all their cameras because that is a cinematic setting that a lot of filmmakers, even professional YouTubers, like to use in their cameras. It makes setting up your camera a lot easier. The other thing that I would recommend in the future is that the cameras have an automatic ND filter system. So that the, when the Pocket 4 comes out, it can have automatic ND filters and you can go from lighter settings to darker settings, no problem. If you look at the DJI Mavic Air with the Hasselblad camera system, it has three lenses on it. And they could even put a one inch lens with the other lenses and even have an anamorphic lens perhaps. These are just a few thoughts on how to approve their cameras. But an HDMI port, I think that this is a critical and positive move for all their future cameras. So my conclusion and recommendation is to stick with DJI because it's not just about buying an action camera. You need to think about the bigger picture so you can integrate their action cameras with their other types of cameras such as the Pocket 3 or the Pocket 4 in the future or maybe their mirrorless cameras. You're not just buying one camera. You're buying an ecosystem. GoPro doesn't have an ecosystem and Insta360 doesn't have an ecosystem, but DJI does have an ecosystem. This is an action camera battle that we're all going to benefit from. As these companies battle it out, we're going to get better features, lower cost, and we're also going to get higher performance out of all of these cameras. So this camera battle between GoPro, DJI, and Insta360 is only going to benefit all of us as a consumer. So that's it for this video. Take care, be safe at work, and I will see you at the next video. Bye.